Okay, fantastic. So, uh, before we get into it, do you want to just give everyone a little intro for yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Lonerbox. I make YouTube videos and sometimes stream on Twitch. So. Fantastic. I was, um, listen, I've, I've got to admit something to you. Obviously, you know, I think we were on a panel once a few months ago. Um, mm. And obviously, I know that you, you stream and I knew you put it in a YouTube channel. But I didn't know either how big a YouTube channel was or, uh, you know, not to blow smoke up your ass, not, nor the quality of your video essays. I was very impressed upon checking it out following the Lauren Southern video. Um, yeah, oh, it was thank good. Thank you. Um, what, what got you into making uh, videos and whatnot? Um, same as anyone else, I guess. I saw a bunch of right wingers saying dumb shit. Got Best. recommended too many fucking Jordan Peterson videos and then decided to, and discovered ContraPoints and decided like, oh shit, that's, that's cool. That's a new, that's a new thing that people do now so yeah and then it just kind of snowballed from that do you, do you consider yourself like a, a bread tuber per se um i got cold one so yeah why not I don't, I don't really care yeah i think it's more of an applied thing or like a market thing if you like like people like to watch bread tube videos but creators don't really call themselves bread tubers that much like you know it's a bit weird yeah i mean i let the i know that i let my style get shaped by that look but that's mm. also just because I like the look. I've all, like even when I was making music before doing YouTube videos, I always liked that, like purple light VHS kind of tie dye bullshit. So yeah, that's like just happened to be a nice coincidence, you know. Fantastic. So um, obviously, I asked you to come on because I wanted to talk about your recent video and debate with Lauren Southern. Um, mm. Before we get into that, though, what I was really interested to understand is. Obviously, uh, Lauren Southern's come on to Twitch. There's been a lot of criticism of platforming her. I would argue that some of the people that have had conversations or they haven't done a very good job of holding her to account. Um, but, mm. but what's your perspective on Lauren Southern's kind of journey on Twitch so far? Um, I mean, I hate Lauren Southern. Like, she's literally just advocating against human rights, like, and being very, like, frustratingly coy about it as well. Mm. But... Another part of me, like you need to, I need to remember that, like we're not just political advocates on here. We're also entertainers, and if you're an entertainer, Lauren Southern is like a brilliant villain. You know, like she's a really good villain. So yeah, I'm okay with people debating her and shit. But yeah, some people don't really do a, as good a job as others. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um... Which is actually, I don't think I, I don't know, people people over like overplay it though. Like she's got a huge channel, right? She's got loads of subs, but her videos don't get that many views anymore. Her Twitch gets even less. Like I don't see what the big deal is. Like if you're going to be arguing with conservatives, which is part of like what we do, it's also part of I think changing people's minds. People get their some people do get their minds changed by watching these debates for whatever reason. It's like what are you doing? Even if you do a bad showing, like she'll she'll like brag about it on a for a fifty k video, and then that's it, you know. I don't really, yeah, I think she's like, I don't know why people build this thing up around her because she's like, she's just not what she used to be, you know? Yeah, sure. I think that um, there is a degree of um, <clears throat> overstating the, the harms that could be caused by platforming. I think there's some meaningful critiques in there, certainly about making sure you're prepared and not just bringing her on and giving her like a nice friendly interview and things like that. But um, hmm. yeah. I think there's an overstatement there. Um, and I think also it's worth bearing in mind that I think pretty much everyone that's spoken to her has had a smaller platform than her, by whichever metric you really slice it by. So, yeah. you know, it's like, what's really happening? Are we are we platforming her or is she platforming us, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I have like a bit of a, maybe a, con I don't think it's that controversial. I think, um, you know, and all my love to him, the only person that's ever been, I think, irresponsibly platformed in any of these like Lauren Southern interactions was probably uh, Lance and Tale of Twin Rabbits. Like that's that's my experience so far. I think, um, yeah, those debates were just like that. Well, that debate was just not very good. So, um, yeah, that's the yeah, only time I think um... there's been like really irresponsible platforming happening on that end. Even the Booksmarts interview, I had like what 15k views, you know, and actually like the fact that he let her speak freely on a lot of things that people like the angry you shot flares people wouldn't have pulled out of her you know um yeah i think there's you know there's something valuable about that as well i think that's that's interesting and we can segue to talking about the uh the video now but but before we do so i just want to sort of say like i thought watching your video i was like oh god book smarts looks a bit i i thought not not that your intent was to necessarily dunk on book smarts per se but i thought that by its nature you were making book smarts look um um, I, I don't know, a little bit permissive or, or not quite tight enough on the way he was speaking to her? Is, is that not the case? 
Well, he wasn't. That wasn't his, that wasn't what he wanted to do. He just wanted to right. talk about rhetoric because that's what he does. Sure. <laughs> it was just his like special interest, I guess. Um, he actually left a comment on the video saying that he liked it. So, and um, he was actually saying like, "Oh, I hope it's a good thing someone got something out of it." So yeah, um, yeah. I don't. Maybe I did, but like that's just what he was doing. Like he was being permissive. So yeah, I don't think I needed yeah, sure. to make him look like that. Well, I mean, one thing, because one thing that um, Booksmart spoke about in the lead up to the, to the conversation was how Lauren is very bad at receiving criticism and critique. Um, and one mm. thing I noted watching your video, watching Lauren's response to your video, which, you know, jumping ahead, but we can get to. But I, I noted that she was very, like, you know, not not good at receiving the critique of the video. When I thought watching it originally, it was fine, like more than fine. It was like a very well laid out argument that, that didn't really seem to have, it seemed watertight, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's just interesting to note that. But anyway, moving on to the video, what was your motivation for making that video then? Um, I, I don't really have that. Like, it's just an instinct, I guess, with, with coming yeah. up with ideas. But like a combination of the amount, the amount of like mad shit she said to Booksmarts. Like she just actually laid out like every, like really, you know, just like every bottom of the barrel far right argument against refugees. And then... Um, also the fact that I watched some of her gauntlet shows and just watching like one dipshit after another talking about shooting flares and like, just like <laughs> yes. under, so uh, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I, I just thought like, okay, there's a, there's a gap here. So people are interested, might as well. That is, and then yeah. the more I, well, I, I read about it, like very, uh, I skimmed it first and then just Every time I would like glance at it after hearing it come up, like just in passing, just over a week or two, I just like noticed it just got worse and worse, you know? Yeah. And then like, you know, like, especially since, and I got this from talking to her as well, like she didn't shoot a flare. What she did, just, what she did was worse. She advocated and supported a group that was trying to send them back into a war zone. Like yeah. she was, she was advocating for effectively sending them to their deaths. So, um, yeah, that's worse than shooting a flare at one boat, I think. So, yeah. Well, we can start at that point, actually, because when I watched the video, I kind of, you know, expressed... I was like, great, Lona Box straight away is dispelling this myth which has persisted for years now where there isn't any video footage of her doing it. So, like, where did it come from? Like, do you know what I mean? Did you have any insight into where that um, piece of misinformation came from that she literally it shot a flare a boat? Must have come from Twitter, I'd imagine. Or maybe... Maybe like some, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I think it's just like a typical kind of hysteria thing. Like this usually happens in like anger. Even there, there are comments under my video saying that she shot a flare. Like it's, yeah, um, yeah. it's really uh, bizarre. So uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I believed it once. I, that was my yeah. line. So it, I think it came from Twitter or maybe youtubers i think there might have been one or two youtubers who did it as well maybe the press um it doesn't really matter i think i think she likes it when people say she shot flares like it benefits it's her easy right to get right yeah yeah because makes um, the left yeah. fucking crazy <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely and also it allows her to dodge a genuine critique which is underneath that which is all the stuff you went over in your video you know she can just say mm. oh, i didn't shoot a flare and that's it the conversation's over and i i feel like that's kind of what happened is people went to her with this she could sidestep that and and where do you go from there if you haven't done the research right yeah, there is there is actually one interview. There is a, there's a quote from her in one paper. It's, o it's only one paper, so I didn't use it for my video, but of her actually talking about how she wanted to get nets to like jam the engines of the Jesus. boats. But that's only one. I only found that in one paper. I didn't know if it was substantiated. So um, yeah, I just left that. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. For for the for the average person, right? I don't blame them for doing that. Like, mm. I don't blame, like, some person, some walloper just on Twitter in their spare time pushing that because it's, like, underlying that is the same. But if you're a content creator and if you're debating her, then, yeah, like, you should be responsible for these things because although consequentially the difference isn't actually that big, it's, like, you're, you're, um, the discourse is, like, really damaged by doing that. And it gives, like, it just gives her so much leeway, you know? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Like, like it's that classic thing. Like, you know, I like to have a moan about, you know, lefties on Twitter and whatever. But if you're like a 50 follower Andy, 
your impact is fairly minimal in the broad scheme of things. But yeah, absolutely. Mm. If you're a big creator, you should absolutely do the due diligence. And I think that you ought to have a standard where, for example, you ought not to make a claim unless you have personally, with your own eyes, verified the facts of what's happened. Because, you know, if Lawrence Southern shot a flare at a boat, you should be able to review a video of that or something, right? Or, or mm. multiple corroborated reports, whatever it is. And obviously no one's done that yet, still there persisting. I think, did Lance say in the course of the debate about, about the shooting the flare? I think he might yeah, have he done. Did. Yeah, he did. He's, he, got, yeah, he got the name of the group wrong. <laughs> yeah, he said quite a I few mean, wrong things. Uh, yeah. Like... <sighs> like you know i'm you know i'm on really friendly terms with lance right like mm. and that's fine but but it's like yeah i think that that was a big misstep um which and it was supposed to be a dunk and at the time it looked great it was like great he's dunking on it but the facts are wrong people start to pull it apart yeah um, yeah and that's the because i before i started that i wanted to do like a i wanted to do a different uh intro where i was going to actually say like people think that it's splitting hairs and it kind of is, but like, say if you had like two Twitter users, right? And one of them was saying things like Brianna Taylor died in her sleep or Winston Churchill, like joked about filling the bellies of striking Welsh miners with lead, you know, like all these things. And then Lauren Southern shot flares at boats. And then there's another Twitter user who might post something like every day, they'll post a video of a bunch of black men beating up white women. And there's no context issues. There's no like comment. It's just like everything's accurate. There's no like four seconds later something changes. Um, so in a sense, that second Twitter user is being more truthful than the first. Everything the first one said is wrong. But then you have to think about like what function are these facts or non-facts serving? The fact that Breonna Taylor didn't die in her sleep, she actually went into the corridor and then got needlessly killed by reckless police officers, doesn't actually change anything. She died when she didn't have to because of malpractice. Yeah. And, um, but the problem is if Twitter user number one says she died in her sleep, then Twitter user number two has a very good opportunity to, to say, uh, actually, she didn't. Look at this article. Did you know she didn't actually die in her sleep? Did you know that her boyfriend fired the first shot? Did you know that there was a warrant? Did, did you know that she was a, her, her ex was involved in drugs? And then he can, t he can say a bunch of things that are actually true, but then underlying that, what he's actually saying is uh, she deserved to die or it was actually okay that she died. It wasn't anyone's fault that she died or definitely wasn't the cop's fault. So they can, but so they can actually, but that one, the fact that the, the uh, died in her sleep person got that one fact wrong is they've just opened this like floodgate that they didn't have to do. Yeah, you know no, I mean. yeah, no, of, of course, I, I totally agree. And I, I'm completely on board with, um, you know, content creators, etc. If you're going to make a statement about something, just make sure it's accurate. Like, I, I think, you know, there aren't, is, you obviously said this in the video, there's no standards or practice um, guidelines for, for us, right? We can literally say whatever we want and we're not going to really mm -hmm. come to any material harm as long as we fit within TOS. So it's kind of up to us to take on that standard ourselves and make sure that we're, doing things factually i guess yeah um i don't know it, it begets difficult because there's on the one hand a massive anxiety about it and like fact checking like everything two or three times over again making sure that i like don't say this unless there's more than one source saying etc then but then you do that and then you uh you know you realize that you've also got like content to make and it gets very difficult yeah to of course yeah it's, it's about a balancing act and you know um, I mean, presuming you're a one-man band, um, mm. you know, it gets difficult too because you've got to do it all yourself, right? Especially, uh, you know. And I think I think video essays obviously lend themselves to that sort of video. You obviously couldn't do that on a live stream because it's no. disparate data. You're trying to pull it all together. So, yeah, I think it's about trying to stick to the strength as well. Like if you're doing a live stream, maybe tackle it in a slightly different way or look at different kinds of content, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, how, how's the video doing so far, by the way? Uh, it's doing like twice as well as the next best one in that space of time. So yeah, wow. pretty well. Fantastic. No, that's good. And news. it's got like every other content creator at the bottom. And yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it so far. I I know there's definitely some things I could have maybe changed a little bit, but no, nah, it's like yeah, I, I would have only learned that ha after releasing it, so it's fine. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, obviously having watched it um through well. I watched it once on its own and watched Lauren's coverage of it, so half of it with her talking over it. Um. I was kind of looking. I think there was one point. No, that was in the debate. There wasn't any point I got to where I was like, you know, I'm not an expert on it, obviously, but I, I thought it was very well put together, basically, is the point I'm trying to make, you know? So well, well done on the Thank video. Um, 
you deserve the the views it's getting i think that's fantastic um yeah so so good stuff i mean like i say i don't i don't really have anything um in regards to the video to say other than it was was really good but but what i wanted to move into is to talk about lauren's response and then the debate um because <laughs> because um <laughs> i i had a, honestly watching lauren's response it was a great stream yesterday because she made herself look stupid as fuck okay um i don't know if you know this but obviously i think you might have seen a part of this but in your video you make the point that this drama t that basically they they're doing the investigative journalism journalism thing right and you mm. make the point that the dates don't add up this can't have happened in the way that it happened yeah yeah and you say you know this is dramatized and lauren yeah. thinks that her saying oh yeah well it was obviously dramatized is like her kind of dunking on you but it's like that's the point you're making right do you just want to elaborate a bit more on the point you were trying to make pointing out the dramatization yeah i think i maybe could have made this point like a bit better because i was mm. more just like happy about the dunk but like it's um um what she was doing with that like i mean like everyone knows she didn't build a fucking evidence board like who the fuck does that and if she did that's even worse because the point i'm making is she has this like really elaborate setup and um which completely changes in the other in the documentary in the documentary all that happens is she gets a phone call from someone saying uh this guy's turning himself in now we're gonna go and uh, go there so we can interview him that's it as in they got like they just got the same news that everyone else in the press got um but in the video it's like as if they're tracking them down tracking him down independently and making all these like phone calls and emails and you know gathering all the evidence from like you know maps of europe and shit and it's like if all that's true if she did all that, that's worse because what like they contributed nothing to the story. Yeah. There's they they like they have no information there that wasn't already that like the press didn't have anyway. They have a clip of him uh saying what the charges are yeah, and so denying them, generous. which was in the press anyway. That's it. And then you have this like addition, which is supposed to be the big thing, is like a clip of an an unidentified guy with a Greek accent, maybe admit into something but then maybe not because there's no you know journalists are supposed to clarify with follow-up questions and they didn't do that so yeah it's just that they made it look like they were contributing something to the story and they didn't there's nothing there's no addition to it yeah absolutely and well that that leads on to another interesting point as well because there was this part in lauren's coverage of it where she misunderstood what you were saying so she yeah. thought you were saying um, the real life interview with this fella didn't take place and it happened over the phone but what you were saying is that the dramatized thing didn't take place and that happened on the phone and she misunderstood yeah. it and went on this like 20 minute like rant basically going oh what you think it was cgi you think it didn't happen um you know trying to dunk on you when you'd actually referenced the real life interview in the uh the footage <laughs> and then had to like sheepishly be told by chat no that wasn't what he was saying actually um i just wondered if you'd, you'd seen that part of the coverage at all yeah, no, I did. That's that. That was the only reason that because I was I was like just dozing off at this point. It was like three in the morning, and then I got Samantha Banana saying, "Do you want to come on and talk?" And then like, okay, and then, um, yeah, then I just I was watching it just like half asleep, and then I saw that she was like going this CGI thing. I was like, okay, maybe I'll just say hi for a minute to tell her that she's like she missed out the sentence that I said. So <laughs> yeah, and then it just kind of spiraled from there. She figured it out obviously before I came on, but yeah. It's funny because that um, that she has another NGO expose on her channel, um, but it's actually worse than the one I covered. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of how it started. It was like I was watching that, and then I decided to come to jump in. Right. Yeah. 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 Because because that for me, like you know, I get very animated when I'm streaming, obviously, and I was just like that is I was loving that because it just makes her look it makes her look um, like she's not really paying attention. Um, mm. I mean, like you say, maybe, maybe, you know, if you were being generous, maybe you could have made the point a bit clearer. Perhaps there's maybe an argument there. But clearly she was, wasn't paying attention. She was looking for ways to kind of weasel away out of the points you were making. But mm. if you look at the actual material arguments that you make, she didn't actually refute any of them um, in, in terms of that segment, right? Because everything you said is correct. And she's copped to this. It was dramatized. Um, it wasn't didn't happen as, as they claimed it did. Um, yeah. So it's just an interesting point, I think. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think she still maintains, though, like, I mean, she's never going to show us like what the rest of that interview sounds like. And if like, it doesn't matter. Like, we know that the money laundering charge has not, like, there's no, nothing's been covered up. Nothing's been found three years later. 
Like that's the latest update. So I don't know if she's going to like actually go and find the actual Greek court documents and find something different. But like, it's funny. The guy that she um, is supposedly investigating, I found him on Twitter. Like he's just, he's just doing his thing. He's just like, he just, he memes a lot. <laughs> and he's like, he's just doing like fucking maritime technology kind of Elon Musk style bullshit. Like he's, yeah, that's, that's what he's doing right now. Um, so he's fine. And a lot of the charges have been dropped against the one of the people who was accused of money laundering. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just going to fade into nothing because, like, we like I know that these are just smears. Like, yeah, of course, because you know. obviously, you know, there's two parts to that um, expose of the lawyer. One is um, that they didn't really clarify what they were saying, but you also elaborated and suggested that maybe it was completely made up. I mean, how likely do you think that is? Um, I don't think it's okay. Um, the fact that we don't know is enough, but it might be real okay. because if it was fake i think they would have given something more direct they wouldn't have given this ambiguous statement that like could or could not be a confession i don't know i really don't know because i don't yeah. like wh why the, why they spoke to the lawyer and shit i don't know um why you like invited these total strangers to come and speak to the lawyer i don't know but yeah like either way there's nothing there that's why i kind of gave two sides like Either this is fake, completely fake. They haven't named the lawyer. There's, you know, etc. Or it's real, and they've made something out of nothing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think that um, for me, it was clear by her reaction, and it's almost like she wanted to focus so much on this idea that there was a CGI interview at the point at which you were pointing out about this phone conversation. Um, I don't know, it felt like she was focusing on that so much because she was trying to pivot away and that was the meat and potatoes that she was worried about getting exposed. I don't know, but um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, but the th yeah, the thing is like, I think taking um, real quotes and things like that out of context is a bit more regular for that, like rebel media types, because mm. I don't know if you remember her talking about uh, Ariel Ricker, the NGO person who was teaching people how to do their asylum interviews. Oh, yeah, I do remember that, I think, yeah. So she said, uh, this is actually one of her videos that went viral. It was like half a million views. Uh, the woman got like a bunch of rape and death threats afterwards. Um, and yeah, she said that, so this is actually a real interview. There's cameras and everything. You can actually see, it's a secret interview, but you can see her speaking. Um, but uh, that was the one where she said that this NGO person was teaching people to pretend to be persecuted Christians so they could get into Europe. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, because obviously this came up in the debate, which, uh, which we'll get to, I'm sure. But yeah, absolutely, there was this meme. And, and this is even something, I think, that goes beyond Lauren Southern, right? Like, this is like, it sounds like something Nigel Farage would say, even. Um, but yeah, absolutely, this idea that if you pretend to be Christian, you're going to have an easier time seeking asylum in, like, a European country or something like that. Is that right? Uh, yeah, which is weird, because that would be a reflection of the EU, because there, I don't, there's no country where you can claim asylum as a Christian that you can't as a Muslim yeah. because Islamic fundamentalists persecute regular Muslims as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I looked at it, right? And she, believe it or not, she never actually says pretend to be Christian. Right. She doesn't say that. Okay. She says um, about how uh, they, the EU states treat it, the process as a script. So you have to act a little bit. You have to like show signs of trauma and you have to have like a very structured list of all your uh, events that like the way you got there and what happened to you, etc. Basically the same way that a lawyer might coach a uh, sexual assault victim, right? right sure. um, very nothing untoward about that. It's just that there's a sentence she uses where she says like, um, so they have these kind of like weird checklists so that like they prefer it. If you don't say your favorite holiday is Christmas, what you have to say is your favorite holiday is Christmas, December 25th, the birth of our Lord, right? So for some reason, the asylum process prefers you, you say, you, like they elaborate on Christmas. Um, but she wasn't saying pretend your favorite holiday is Christmas. It's just if you're going to say your favorite holiday is Christmas. You need to structure it in this way because that's yeah. the way they like to, to hear it, basically. You yeah, know, that makes sense to me. I mean, yeah, of course. Like, even people that, like you say, someone that is a victim of a crime um, will receive pointers and guidance into how they ought to go about um, speaking and, and act and whatnot because certain behaviors can mean that that will 
and, and it could be, be behaviors which aren't like bad per se but they just might raise suspicion or something like that right i don't know that seems like mm-hmm. fairly reasonable to me um but yeah but, yeah now the narrative is you've got all these muslims pretending to be christians burning their passports trying to get into the eu which obviously yeah sounds, yeah yeah which just it doesn't fit with the with the law or the procedure there's like there's no reason you'd have to do that unless the eu are very maliciously having a bias over like persecuted christians over muslims yeah okay. uh, which is which then i wouldn't blame her for doing that because you shouldn't have to prove you're a christian to flee like syria you know because you don't have to be Christian to be suffering in Syria. No, of course, absolutely. Um, but yeah, uh, that just that's just something that came up as well. Okay, so um, let's let's talk a bit about the debate itself then. So obviously, what I think is so funny about this is you said it was what was it three a.m. your time? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, I just I just find it kind of amusing because you know the the you're, you're rocking up three a.m. half asleep. Okay, not really prepared for this debate, presumably. You've just been pulled into it like last minute, essentially. Mm. Um, but I think that like pretty much everyone I've spoken to and has commented on it has said like that was the best like debate anyone's had with Lauren Southern in this recent sort of Twitch arc, I guess you could call it. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty good, I think. I mean, maybe some people might like Destiny's debates with her, but in terms of talking about her past, I think it's probably the best. So. Um, how did you manage to do that with a 3 a.m. in the morning when you hadn't slept? I don't know. Um, it's, I mean, I, like, I know she gish gallops like a motherfucker and she doesn't actually care about like the well-being of refugees. So that's why she keeps bringing it back to like, oh, how can Europe handle this? You know, what if, what if they all come? Is it? And I just thought like the only, like, I just had to try and focus it on like, okay, what actually is like important here? And the things that are important is, uh, she, I don't know, actually. I don't think I did. I know. I, I was. I don't think I actually had much of a strategy. What okay. really happened was that she um, has basically uh, pushed herself into an impossible position, because part of her rebranding, uh, you know, changing my mind on immigration or borderless and all that. It's all about like, okay, we're not going to call them invaders. We're not going to talk about great replacement. We're going to talk about how this is bad for them as well. So. Um, it's about having concern for the, 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 there's some kind of perceived concern for the well-being of people fleeing terror. And then also balancing with um, a respect for, for the law or international law, like, or international maritime law. So she's trying to balance those two things, the humanity of the migrants and the law, with the fact that she doesn't really want any of them to come. And this is an impossible combination in Europe or anywhere, actually. Sure. Well, that's that's one thing I noted when I was watching the debate is that, um, you know, she would say things like, I'm, I'm interested to get the info on Australia, like you mentioned, but she would keep referencing Australia. And it's mm. like, okay, so you want this immigration system like Australia. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure she probably thinks lefties are like pie in the sky utopian people. But like, how are you going to implement that? Like, what, what, how, what process would you go through to get Europeans, um, to get Europe's laws changed? And indeed, seemingly maritime law and other international laws. How would you do that? So everywhere's like Australia. It just seems like an impossible task that you wouldn't be able to um, do. Yeah, it's actually, um, it's a bit easier than that because like, the thing that I find really strange about her, and I, I guess I can see why she's doing it, is I don't, her chat were doing a better job at this than she was. Because the right answer, if you're Lauren Southern, is, well, fuck international law, like globalists, you know, what about national sovereignty? That's all right. she has to say. And Got then it. all of that just, all of that is just out of the, out of the, it's in the bin. But she's spent the last three years pretending to care about international maritime law. So it's going to be quite difficult for her to, you know, f- bite that bullet now. Ah, right. Um, okay. Interesting. So that's why I, I knew that that was going to be quite easy because it's just if you're arguing about the law, then you know the law's not on your side. So whatever. Like I can just I can just read her the law and that's it. That's done. Yeah. But the thing with Australia is like I didn't know anything about Australia when she was talking about it. I know a bit more now. Um, you know, I guess like okay, if if I don't know anything about this, let's just think. Well, how do I apply that to Europe? And if you apply it to Europe, it means sending them back to Libya, right? Or Algeria or somewhere where. Uh, you're violating maritime law because you're sending them to a place that's dangerous and that they can't have their asylum processed. Um, do you want to talk about Australia? Yeah, let's let's get into that. So, because I was watching it and I was a bit 
perplexed by the situation with Australia. What's the deal with Australia and immigration? So Australia is like the most brutal like asylum policy in the entire English speaking world. Like uh, what happens is uh, most of them come in from Indonesia and they arrived in Indonesia from places like Sri Lanka or Myanmar or Afghanistan. So like Indonesia is technically a safe country, but not for refugees, not for asylum seekers. Their process is full of like abuse and torture and like, like, uh, uh, very long lasting arbitrary detention times. So that's kind of what happens. And Australia's policy, first of all, in 2012 to 2014, was to put them on processing islands, which were mainly Nauru and Papua New Guinea, and some went to Christmas Island. And that's where they're supposed to get processed. But they made this law, which was that if you turn up to Australia by boat, you're banned from Australia. That's like, right. there's no going to Australia. So the idea is that this would stop people from making the journey and drowning. Um, and it would bring down the trafficking service and uh, uh, yeah, s save money on you know, having to support asylum seekers. But what happened was putting people on offshore detention centers in a different colony is insanely expensive because you have to build a detention center and maintain it. Every time there's a medical emergency, people need to get flown into Australia and as, as an emergency. Uh, a couple of people have died because this process was delayed. Um, then, so you're, you're spending a lot of money to do it. So they actually only did that for two years. They stopped and then after that, all they did was they just pushed every single boat back. Now you can do that because there's not many people coming from Indonesia. It's like the highest number was 20,000 like 10 years ago. Um, so, uh, this is where it gets a bit sketchy because what she's saying is the number of drownings went, to, went down to zero because everyone who tried to leave was just getting caught right at the coast and sent back to Indonesia. Um, that's involved the Australians sending their own boats in to push people back. So sending their own boats outside of Australia into Indonesian waters and sending people back. And then it's also involved they've been accused of this a few times, they've been accused of actually paying the smugglers to bring the people back themselves. So the question becomes like, okay, they're not drowning. They're just going back to a place where they're facing a plethora of human rights abuses. So it's like lives are being saved only to get destroyed right afterwards. Damn. So yeah. like you say, it's the equivalent of what you were talking about with them getting sent to Libya in, in Europe, right? It's close. So yeah, like Indonesia is not as bad as Libya, but it's not oh, sure. a, it's yeah. not an appropriate place to, to seek asylum. It's not yeah. good for that. Um, what they do uh, in the, when they're taken for processing is actually worse, though. So when they go to Nauru and Papua New Guinea, you can look at reports and like health experts have gone there. Uh, they've actually described the kind of physical and mental health crisis that's been going on in those islands as like comparable to that of people who have been at war. Like, um, there's stories about like seven uh, kids aged from like seven to 12 trying to commit suicide, like dousing themselves in gasoline, fucking uh, being catatonic, uh, multiple suicides, a couple of murders, like between the people living there. And th some of them are just there indefinitely. Like, they have no idea. And the worst thing is because Australia is processing them while they're there and they know they don't need to take them to Australia, they can actually be accurate with the asylum assessments. And it turns out that like between 80 and 100% of them are legitimate refugees. Wow. So this policy has achieved like none of the things it said it would. It's not saving lives. It's just delaying and prolonging suffering. It's not cheaper because all the money that gets spent there doesn't go into circulation like it would if they were here, or if they were in the country. And it's very expensive to run a detention center. It hasn't reduced the smuggling business. Uh, the number of refugees entering Indonesia went up every year while this was happening. So underlying that, the only thing it's actually achieving is keeping the foreigners out of Australia. And it's failed at that as well, because this year, half of the people in Nauru and Papua New Guinea had to get evacuated for, uh, because of a uh, physical and mental health crisis. And they had to get evacuated to Australia. 
So, do you have any insight into why the Australian government went down that route with this? Because anti-refugee is like sentiment is just a sickness. Like it's a sickness of the brain. It makes no sense. It's cost them more money. Uh, it hasn't saved anyone really. It hasn't like you know protected the sanctity of human life. It hasn't destroyed smuggling, and it hasn't kept them out of Australia because now half of them are just having to have had to bring, been brought in there for emergency measures. But this happens all the time. There are loads of like uh, anti-immigrant like posturings, whether it's like Australia or uh, Viktor Orban or uh, anyone like that. Like it's just they're not really doing anything useful. They're actually almost hurting their own population as well because they're just wasting their population's money on these like really barbarous projects. But that unfortunately is what wins elections for some people. It's just like, it's not about being practical or defending anything or anything like that. It's just about uh, who can be, who can show the most cruelty towards these people. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. Um... Okay, well, uh, yeah, thanks for putting me on Australia. Just to pick out like a, a few points in the debate. Um, so one thing uh, you sort of, uh, you know, hold it hold to come very well across the board. But like one thing that I was kind of confused about in particular, what was this business she was talking about with Turkey? What, what was she trying to say was happening in Turkey? Um, well, there's like 4 million refugees in Turkey. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's got the biggest population of them. I don't really know what she's saying because it's, this is all just like you know, she's just gone there and filmed some stuff i don't really know about statistics about it or anything but yeah like people in turkey are trying to go into europe there was a temporary period when the balkan route opened and a lot of people went in and now they're just kind of in uh refugee camps because the country is fairly overloaded like four million people in one country and yeah they're just like there are refugee camps there where you know there are just like lots of riots and people with indeterminate futures and things like that I think that's kind of like what she was getting at. And that was her way of saying, but the people in the camps in Turkey can go home whenever they want. Right. But they choose to stay in the camps. So I don't really know. Like, I think she's just trying to do like the deterrent logic. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, of course, because she keeps talking about this pull factor. That seems to be a big part of her argument is the idea that yeah. NGO operations are pulling people in. But, but it seemed like this, the figures you had um, put together didn't really suggest that was the case. Yeah, well, because anywhere that isn't like in civil war or committing genocide or massive persecution and all that, anywhere that is slightly better than that is going to have a pull factor. Yeah. Like, that's why Lebanon had a pull factor. Lebanon pulled in millions of people. Turkey pulled in millions of people, even though the people in those camps are just in countries with barely any infrastructure, well, at least in Lebanon, and with like not enough infrastructure to support them, just kind of vegetating in camps with... with uh, very ambiguous futures and they're staying there anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't really like, yeah, pull factors and push factors. Are, there's so many reasons though, but that's why like, I don't like the whole thing of, we know that pushing them back doesn't stop them trying to come. Another thing that happened in Indonesia was uh, boats were getting pushed back, but that often just led to people trying more dangerous routes afterwards. So there's a big story about like a lot of uh, women who got pushed back from Indonesia uh, selling themselves into sex slavery instead so they could you know, have some kind of permanence somewhere. Like, uh, Jesus, very bleak, isn't it? It's horrible. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah it's, it's not the... And like, it, like, it, there's no like, how do you apply it legally either. Australia is breaking like almost every international law there is on refugees to do this. Oh, that, wow, I, I wasn't um, aware of that. Um, so, well, I, I guess, how do they get away with it? They just, I don't know, chad.jpg, we don't care. Like, we're going to do what we want to do. Um, yeah, because, well, international law doesn't, like, have to... Because, like, local laws can, can override international laws. Mm. And international law doesn't really mean anything unless it's enforced. It's usually, it's usually more of a way to, like, uh, put diplomatic and uh, economic pressures on countries, like you know like international laws i mean sort of like sanctions or to prosecute maybe politicians but yeah it just if you have like every country that's supposed to be upholding international law breaking it then it's kind of difficult to make anything out of it yeah of course i mean we've got that problem in the e- uh, eu well we we're not in the eu anymore but we there's that problem in the eu with uh like hungary for example right like they're reneging on some of their um obligations i believe with with uh refugees is that right um yeah, because they had a referendum, a very 
I think it was quite a dodgy one, but they had a referendum on whether or not Hungary should take refugees, and 99% said no. Um, I didn't bring this up with Lauren because I couldn't really remember the details, but during the opening of the Balkan routes, a lot of people ended up in Hungary because they were passing through. Uh, they were stranded at a train station for a few weeks. And uh, Orban's plan was basically just to say, like, no, no refugees here. Like, we're going to put up a bunch of signs uh, telling refugees to go somewhere else. And he wrote them all in Hungarian. So they were just for the, they were just for the locals. You know, they weren't for the refugees. And then the plan was to get them on trains to send them into Germany. Uh... And... Um, which, which they eventually did after like three times of uh, people paying for tickets for trains that never arrived. And then eventually they went. Uh, but the problem was you had like thousands of people basically getting cabin fever in this train station um, before they were basically ushered into Western Europe. No vetting. Two of those people at that train station ended up getting recruited for the Batclan attacks while they were in the station. Wow. Damn. Because there was just, they weren't, like, he wasn't bothering to screen anyone to, or to, like, check their status or anything. Because, like, although you don't have to claim asylum, you can still get screened in a country before you're, uh, you know, before you're allowed to go somewhere else. But Orban didn't do that. He just, he built, like, two walls in mainland Europe. But the problem with building walls in mainland Europe is you can just go around them, which they did. So <laughs> people just, wa they just walked to Austria and then Germany and then France. And then, yeah, two of them ended up being uh, terrorists. So that's the thing about Orban is like putting your country first, but like people like Lauren Southern will often juggle between national sovereignty and then also like the sovereignty of Europe. And Orban kind of sacrificed like Europe's safety on the altar of Hungary's like democratic will. So, yeah, yeah, no, but that's, that's really interesting. Um, and um, I think in terms of the debate, the, the final thing I wanted to get to you to discuss with that um, was just in regards to uh, Lauren's response to um, your uh, information in regards in the UK to how much um, uh, asylum seekers get paid. Um, yeah. What, what were your thoughts on that? I don't know. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I, 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 fuck, I really wanted to, like... I didn't have the energy to be cheeky or anything like that. I wanted to be like, isn't it so weird that like she's so inquisitive over asylum seekers getting underpaid while they're making their claim, but some fucking shit for brains politicians talk about AIDS blankets and she just gobble, 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 like fucking, <laughs> you know, like just the double standard and shit. She was like she, fucking home office data. And she was like, oh, I don't know. Hmm, you know. Oh, well, you know, there are food banks and charity groups and all that, you know, okay, well, yeah, so whatever, but... Yeah, I, like I literally, no gov.uk, gov.uk, yeah. oh, God, I don't know, this is a bit of a, it's what, dot .uk, um, you know, website, I'm not sure about those ones, um, yeah, no, that's a really interesting <laughs> point. In fact, it's funny you mentioned, I've forgotten about the AIDS blankets thing, that was another point of the debate, I was just cracking up, like, what, what information do you need to look at to know you got, don't get AIDS from clothes? I don't understand what she was looking for. You know? Yeah, I think um, I don't be, well, because I know I know that these are cynical politicians just using like, you know, just making shit up basically so they can get like a fucking so they can so they can stop the boats. Right. If you lay a false accusation at a boat and impound it, then it doesn't matter if you're not going to catch anyone because you've stopped the boat. Yeah, exactly. They don't need to get a conviction. Like, that's why there are as many trials happening against Salvini as there are against the entire of, entirety of the NGOs. So, like, there's one NGO going on trial and Salvini is going on trial. So, um, he's, he's like, he's as guilty as the entirety of all the NGOs so far. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think maybe the one thing she tried to say that I uh, didn't pick up on was that, like, in hospitals, like, you have to put, uh, like, bloody stuff into bio-waste bins. But they weren't handing the waste into hospitals. They were handing it into port authorities, like, public waste. Yeah. So if, I, if someone has HIV and they get blood on their T-shirt and they, they don't have to bring their T-shirt to the bio-waste bin, they put it in the general waste bin. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's some technicality in Italy, but it's it's ridiculous, whichever way you look at it. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
you know, because because obviously HIV is is past blood or bodily fluid, uh, blood or sexual body fluids. So, like you said at Loner yeah. Box, mm. Lauren um, shifted I'm her sorry, rhetoric yeah. onto the immigrants instead of being. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so even even if it was like totally soaked in blood, I just I just don't understand i mean sorry unless it was like totally soaked in blood and you'd like a cut on your hand and picked it up i, I don't know i just don't see how this is i, I don't know it just it was just a, a little kind of pivot i think almost to move away from the broader point that you're making to demonstrate that clearly the italian government was taking actions to um you know f fuck with the boats this is the way i put it right mm -hmm. yeah that's that's exactly what they were doing yeah um, there's actually an in-depth documentary about one of these being covered. It was about the Juventa. There was a rescue vessel called the Juventa. And it's like a half-hour documentary compiled by these two, I um, can't remember what they were, but there were two academics who made this documentary, just basically reviewing the court documents. And it's just, it's really, like, really dumb shit. Like, there's one thing that the um, piece of footage that the prosecutors used saying that, look, this is the, these are the NGOs uh, tugging a boat back to Libya, as in like giving it back to the smugglers was the claim. But then they just published, like uh, the NGO just published a different camera angle of the fact that the boat was actually going the other way. So right. it's like really mad shit like that, you know? Um, so yeah, like it's very clear that they are just going off of like conjecture just, just to delay the process of migrants coming. And it's, you know, it's worked. Yeah, to absolutely. A degree. Um, but but yeah, mo moving back to the UK, because I, I think that, um, well, first of all, I think she was confused because she thought that you were saying that people get um, five pound a day, well, five pound and pence a day um, after they had their claims processed. But, you know, I, I looked at it whilst I was talking about it and it's that's what they get whilst they're waiting to have their claims processed. Um, hmm. yeah. And that's for everything. Like you say, obviously, they get a house, but that's for food. That's for clothing. That's for sanitary products, etc. Right. So it's not mm. much to live on, is it, really? No, it's pretty miserable, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think I think that the point you made, because at the end of the day, if that's the situation, Lauren's got kind of two choices, really. The government either increases, ideally would increase the amount they're being paid so they've got more to live with, or you get rid of this work ban that is in place, right? And that's how you hopefully deal with that issue and give them a better standard of living while they're having their claim processed, right? But Lauren didn't really seem to commit to like anything she just kind of danced around it a bit i don't know what, what do you think yeah i don't know if i was if i was a different streamer i'd make a joke about her being privileged and like not understanding <laughs> that five pounds a day is a lot, lot lots of people in the uk live on like will only spend that much on food like, yeah yeah not nothing untoward about that even if you're not an asylum seeker but um i don't know i just like it did it didn't mean that much to me as a it's like, there's nothing it's not like a strong point i just it was the fact that she decided to get so like inquisitive about it it's weird though because like that was probably the most genuine like like empathy I've ever seen her display towards migrants. She actually seemed like genuinely concerned about living on that much, which is interesting. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Um I, I think I think like the broader problem like, you know, I'm not someone that expects watertight prescriptions of how we should deal with things, but like she she kind of it's almost like she's just kind of moaning about things that exist, but like doesn't really have a meaningful idea of how to push things forward. Um, you know, which sounds which sounds like a Twitter lefty to me, not Lauren Southern, who's supposed to be this like mega brain rightoid person. So um, yeah, like like I say, she wants to just have rules like Australia, but doesn't really know how to implement it. Um, you know, she wants uh, asylum claimants to have a better standard of living, but doesn't really have any ideas about how to implement it. I, I, I don't know. What, what do you think? Um, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know why she was being so like well behaved with me as well. Like she. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Like, um, I feel like, I feel like she's probably going to maybe find a bunch of like factoids that can be slightly uh, bent another way and like maybe just hold on to that. And I, I, I don't know. Um, it's, I'm kind of thinking like, it's not really like, it's weird because like refugee stuff is really difficult to argue as a leftist because it's a crisis like it's like it's people fleeing war there's no clean way to do it you know you're going to have people who arrive with no documentation and you have no fucking idea where they came from or where they go and like i didn't really like the fact that i just said they get deported and all that because that's actually not a very good idea like i personally think like path to citizenship or halfways should be uh considered because like if they're here anyway you know and i, d I and then 
we can see if that becomes a pull factor. I don't think it would because the journey is so dangerous anyway. That like, and some people just don't want to leave. Like lots of people are quite happy with the uh, totalitarian movements in Libya and places like that. So, um, I don't know. Like, I because I'm like half Middle Eastern. I've kind of had to defend immigrants in the UK to people I've met and spoken to for most of my life. So, oh, yeah. it's. Um, it's just one of those things like, you know, right wingers do like do have ways in like, you know, with the whole like trans identity, you can try and get really philosophical and trap people in all these like metaphysical. What does it mean to be a woman, et cetera? You can do that. Like, but as for refugees, like, nah, it's just a, it's just like brain worms. Like there's no rationality behind it. And eventually, like. The underlying thing is just that they're like, well. You know, if um, if it's one job that gets taken by a refugee that would have been taken by a local or one crime that's committed by a refugee against a local, that's too many. You know, that's that's really like their fundamental rationale, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I think what it belies is, um, yeah, it, it seems like, um, you know, Lauren doesn't want to say it. Um, you know, I can only guess, but it seems like her perspective is like, you know, making it as difficult as possible for them to get over here. Um, that was her position back then. It seems to still be her position now. So, like, the question becomes, what's changed then, right? Yeah, I mean, the worst thing for me was that she didn't know that Libya was in civil war when she was advocating to send people back there. Yeah. She didn't know that, like, the Libyan Coast Guard were actually, like, murdering people in the sea when she was advocating to send people back there. People who she didn't, you don't know are refugees. Like, um, yeah, I think that's what probably makes it worse because, like, that, of course, she doesn't, she, why would she need to know that? That's not part of her story. Or part of her story is, you know, film some dramatic shit in Europe. And if it's not dramatic, put some dramatic music over it in the background, yeah. you know, like, um, you know, just gather some anecdotes, tell a story. And that's, that's all you, that's all you need. So, yeah, I, I don't know if she's going to, come to terms with that or but you know that's that's kind of like that's the worst thing for me like that nothing like most of the rest is just kind of like oh dumb shit but yeah the yeah. fact that she was like you know basically trying to send people to their deaths it's kind of yeah because yeah, the thing is she 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 goes on about oh lefties want me to apologize it's like i, I don't really care about an apology like you don't I me mean, an apology you've never done anything directly personally to me right but it's yeah. it's more so just about contending with what you've done and having some degree of you know, dem demonstrable remorse for like the bad shit you've done, and it just it seems like she hasn't got any right. Like she was de defending, she's almost defending the things she's done. In fact, at one point she was watching it and went, "Oh yeah, that there." When I'm saying um, illegal immigrants out, that was a bit cringe. Those were her words, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. it's a bit more than cringe, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um... I don't know. I don't know if it's like, I don't know how these people work. Like some people do end up like, like denial is a powerful thing, right? Like, I don't know if you remember that story from like a few years ago of David Cameron, when he uh, actually went and complained to the Oxford Council uh, because the public services that he had cut were not functioning properly because he was, he spent some time in Oxford. He was disappointed by the public services there. So he actually wrote a letter complaining to the council. And they wrote back saying, well, yeah, you cut our budgets. Like, that you did that. You stood up in Parliament and said, we should do this. Like, no way. Yeah. So I think that's kind of, like, some people are just that, like, blissfully unaware. And it's a hard thing to accept that you were fundraising for a group that was sending people into detention centers. Like, I really wanted to, again, like, holding back. When Do you remember she was asking me to, um, she was asking me to go on a trip with her to see all the refugee camps and shit. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought like, well, okay, maybe I'll do that. But only if like the condition is you uh, do something that she's never done is actually visit some of the people who had their claims accepted and you know, are living uh, a very peaceful and dignified life and integrating and all that. You know, we can sit for dinner with some, someone who came across the central Mediterranean. You know, they got refugee status. You can fucking munch on their tabbouleh and falafels and then just be like, hey, funny story. You know, like uh, if I had had my way, you'd be in a fucking detention center right now. Like, crazy. <laughs> Um. <laughs> oh my god yeah no that i mean that would be that would be interesting content i mean i i feel like um 
I don't know if you're going to speak to her again or whatnot, but it feels like it's one of those things like, oh, I need to look into that. I'll get back to you. We should go on a trip. It just feels like pivoting and trying to move away, I think. I don't know if there's going to be any further action on that. Like you say, she'll probably find some factoids and be like, oh, well, actually, there's this thing here from this uh, this paper from, uh, you know, the Daily Stormer that tells us, you know, and stuff like that. So, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but we'll the see. thing is with that, like, she's, she's just not very good at that either. Like, it's, it's just, I, I think it's just that she's trying to do, like, yeah, she's just trying to juggle these incompatible, uh, very like these incompatible features, like the uh, s- snooty like fact checker debunker, but who holds all these like insane right wing positions and has an audience, by the way, that doesn't care about the facts. Yeah, yeah. Like still to this day. Um, so yeah, she, I think she's. I think I, I honestly think her fate's going to be the same as like people like her. I've only ever really seen like two things happen is one, you become a de-radicalizer, you know, you, you just do like, you just hold your head in shame for ages and you do like the whole Kalen Robertson thing now where he like runs a, like a de-radicalizing thing. You do that and it's maybe like just not a very exciting content life or you uh, go back the way Tommy Robinson did, you know, you yeah. just, you just realize that the drama, like that's all you, that's all you're good for. Like with, with it, like that's all that's compatible with this ideology is just filming anecdotes, doing deceptively edited drama scenes and, you know. Yeah. Well, I guess, uh, I guess time will tell. Um, uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, we'll start to wrap things up. One interesting thing I noted is I don't really think I've seen many people being critical of you for talking to Lauren Southern. So that's a plus. I don't know if you've experienced it though. Um, no. Yeah. No. Uh, I don't know why. Like, uh, I tend to avoid criticism quite a lot, even though I do some sketchy shit sometimes. So don't, don't we know. all? Don't we all? Um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm sure my time will come. I'm too small to get like cancelled. You know. It'll happen. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, um, it seems like you're you're quite you're quite a sharp fella, and you tend not to say things that are going to get you in trouble where possible. I don't know, maybe I've missed something though. Um, but but yeah, it's always. Uh, I've said uh, I've said a few bad words in my videos, or maybe one oh. or two, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's don't like... t- don't tell people that they'll be going and searching for them. You'll be cancelled. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, fuck, fuck knows. Like it's. Um... Yeah, it's difficult though, because like, uh, like politically, like I'm very left wing. Like my positions are a lot more radical than the ones I talk about in my videos. But that's just because, like, you know, r- radical left stuff is really hard to push right now. I've, you know, Corbyn lost, Sanders lost. You know, you like we need to win over like, like middle ground people. We can talk about no borders and fucking all that shit some other time. You know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think that um, you know, it's yeah. It, for me, it's like Corbyn was rejected, Sanders was rejected, and they were really, in in essence, offering social democracy, um, broadly speaking, right? So it's like if we if we can't even get that through, what, what's the next step? You know, Keir Starmer? Like, I don't know about that. What are your thoughts on Starmer? Uh, I don't know, man. He's like he's like literally a blockhead. Like his his head <laughs> is a block, and I, he's so oh god. I know exactly what he's doing. He's trying to do what worked for him as a lawyer in politics right. you know you just you, where like a lawyer on like day one or two will just you know b- give like a bunch of really vague uh statements that they can walk back on later if the evidence changes and all that but it's just not gonna like these kind of airtight legal arguments and you can't do that as a politician like he's he's absolutely fucked and labor party's probably not going to be in for another five ten years but yeah um <laughs> fuck what do you think yeah, I mean, I, I just think that, you know, he is desperately trying to, like, re... It's, all, it, it's definitely a harking back to Blair, you know? He definitely is walking in the shadow of Blair, um, trying to win people back. But, like, I think the problem has already happened. Like, Brexit was a massive issue, and now people have got massive distrust of the Labour Party because of that, and everything else is kind of spin-wheeling off of that. So, you know, it's kind of like bolting the door after the horse has bolted, like... I think you're right. Labour's fucked for at least five, ten years. Um, and what's going to happen? I don't know. They probably do need another leader. Keir Starmer's getting battered in the polls. Like, I, I don't know. What what, what, what do they think is going to happen that's going to make Keir Starmer suddenly be elevated for, in the polls to, like, get elected? I just don't see how that's going to happen. Know. It's really frustrating as well, but especially to see, like, Boris Johnson being more, like, 
more state interventionist than Keir Starmer is. There, there's been more indication that we're going to get um, private uh, uh, public ownership of some uh, gas and utilities, like uh, from Boris Johnson, than we are from Keir Starmer. It's more likely that we'll get like fucking uh, free broadband from Boris Johnson than Keir Starmer. It's more likely that the like the Conservative Party are probably going to have a woman of color as their leader before Labour will. You know. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's really, yeah, it's, I, they're just not reading, like, I get the British system, like, Labour's not really supposed to win, that's why they never do, if you look at the last 120 years, they've won barely ever, so, um, yeah, I don't know, it's a, which is a really sad, because, like, so many of the left-wing economic policies of Corbyn were more popular than what the Tories were offering, it's just that, they managed to make everything with labor about like them being pro immigration or pro or woke or something like that. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. if Corbyn had just, if Corbyn had just said, this is national socialism, we'd probably be laughing. Right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're right. It's, uh, it's, it's yeah. Difficult future ahead for the, uh, for the UK, um, with, with the left-wing politics. Um, Okay, and um, yeah, the final thing I'll ask you: Have you got any anything, any projects you're working on that you can share with us? Any spicy videos coming? Um, up? I might do a part two just to do the Australia thing. Ooh, because it's yes. a good example of them failing, like yeah, the, the, the fact that they just failed at everything, including keeping people out. <laughs> the fact that they had to take half of them in because of the fucking crisis that they caused is just I don't know. Yeah, that's probably coming and then maybe I'm, I'm really i'm still really fascinated by uh right wingers uh simping for the taliban that might come up as well no that that yeah that'd be really interesting yeah fantastic mm -hmm. well um listen we've been speaking for just over an hour so we'll wrap it up thanks so much for coming on mate i really appreciate it okay yeah thanks for having me man what's your what's the rest of your evening looking like streaming oh i'll probably only stream for another 30 minutes i'll probably find some right toy to laugh at or talk about my ongoing cancellation it's not really a cancellation there's just some people that are angry with me because they don't understand what jokes are but we'll see what happens i guess well the, the i will say i will say <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's um, just the fact that it comes out of a fucking english person as well it just makes me think of like something jeremy clarkson would say you know <laughs> yeah yeah for sure i mean i guess i'm kind of channeling a jeremy clarkson type figure in regards to that maybe but um you know yeah it's true though illegal immigrants a dirty word but, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it is. It is. The, the thing, okay, I'll explain, right? Because I agree with you. I, d I don't like the term illegal immigrant, but the point is I'm responding to like Lauren Southern and she's talking about this stuff, yeah. you know, and it's like, come on, like, I'm just obviously saying it because she's saying it, right? Like, if I was talking about it in another context, maybe I'd use the correct terminology, but Jesus Christ, like, I'm responding yeah. to Lauren Southern, right? Like, come on. I mean, you have to, yeah, like, you have to, like, because I was telling her about fucking deporting people who fail their claims. I don't actually want to do that. Like, I think path to citizenship is much better idea well if it fails fuck knows but like yeah just but i, I think yeah. the, in the context of that conversation that's the 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 you know the best you know because you can talk about like uh, prescriptions and stuff that's fine but you're you're dealing with the reality as it stands do you see what i mean so i kind of yeah i mean that like that is the like very few people who illegally cross into europe actually get deported but that is yeah. the law like if if they're found to come from like i don't know dubai and they're like you know a middle class like muslim guy with like two wives and yeah they just go back <laughs> yeah 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 um, it's kind of like what what do you want to do make it more illegal to be a legal immigrant do you want to make it more illegal to, to burn documents like what what is it she's hoping for but yeah i don't know yeah well yeah um we'll figure it out i'm sure they're all I'm, i i feel like it's uh what is it the the fucking i'm sure there's still some part to play in this whole thing but well. yeah yeah um fantastic well yeah thanks uh thanks for coming by and um yeah could you want to give yourself like one more shout out before you go yeah, fuck it. I'm Loner Box you, uh, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it for you. Okay, don't worry. Um, have 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 a good evening, okay? And we'll speak again at some point. I'm sure. All right. All right. I, it's, you shout yourself out to my guys. I've got a hundred people here as well. Oh, okay, cool. Show me how it's done. Yeah, of course. Hello, I'm Chud Logic. Okay, I'm one of the only Marxoid streamers on Twitch that's worth listening to. Okay, come and check my stuff out. There's memes. There's creams. There's a little bit of uh, of spicy spicy memes going on at the moment regarding the N word. So come and check that out. Um, yeah, come and subscribe to me, Chud Logic on uh, on YouTube, Chud Logic on Twitch. Um, and if you want to find me on Twitter, my producer's on there because I've been banned twice at Irrational Chad. Let's get it. Thank you. Yeah. Nice one. All right. Okay. 
You take care, my friend, all right? You too. Catch you later. Nice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.